All right, let's get started uh, in the interest of time. So, hi everybody, I'm Samir. You might have got an email from me, but um, I'm one of the people organizing this. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me or Anton. Uh, we'll get to hang out a lot more over the course of the day, over lunch, over the barbecue, and, and so on. And I'm also meeting a lot of you on one of ones Just as a quick introduction, I just started last year um, at UCI. Before that, I did my postdoc for a couple of years at University of Washington, and got my PhD a couple of years ago before that. Um, it's interesting, I got my PhD after I started my postdoc, so <laughs> not really accurate to call it postdoc at that point. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of stuff in machine learning and natural language processing. It's a whole range of problems that I like looking at, uh, going from in machine learning, sort of interpretable machine learning that I'm gonna talk about a little today but also semi-supervised learning, tensor matrix factorization, graphical models, and, and so on. Uh, I also do a lot of natural language processing. That's the sort of problems that motivate me a lot. Um, and within NLP, I do a lot of information extraction and entity linking, disintegration, a lot of joint probabilistic models of multiple things. Uh, but today I'm gonna focus mostly on interpretable ML, and I'm gonna just sort of highlight one of the projects that I've been doing. You, you guys have got a lot of like high level stuff. I just wanted to give you one example research project. Okay. So as Alex showed you, and you are convinced that machine learning is basically everywhere. Initially, it was designed for us to save sort of effort, so we don't have to look at a lot of email, we don't have to look at a lot of useless images, we focus on what's important. Uh, then it sort of started going towards games, which may not be saving us time. Now we don't have to play games, I guess, because computers are better than us. Um, but now the computers are dictating what we're going to do with our time by telling us exactly what we should be watching. Um, and you know, it's machine learning is sort of in our phones, in our homes, it's going to be in our cars, and so it's incredibly important to be working in this area, as far as I can see. But one of the problems with most of these machine learning applications is that we don't really know what's happening. Uh, I'll give you one example of what <coughs> machine learning can do nowadays, which I think is really impressive. What you do is you take an image like this, which is not a normal image, um, and you give it to a machine learning algorithm, and you can ask it a question. Is there a mustache in this picture? And the machine learning model is able to say yes by interpreting this as the most accurate. Right? And if that is not uh, impressive to you guys, then you can also ask it, what is the moustache made of? And machine learning comes back and says banana. Right? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, but what is also amazing about machine learning is you don't necessarily need like complicated knowledge or complex machines. What you can do is you can just take a, any task that you care about. So for example, if you're if you care about differentiating between a wolf and a dog, you can just quickly set up a system, and I did this in maybe a couple of hours, where it can look at an image and figure out whether it's a wolf or a dog, right? And it can do it really accurately. You can see in this case, it makes only one mistake. Um, and humans, I imagine, would be much worse at this than, than machine learning. Right? It's only one mistake, and it's able to tell dogs versus wolves. But the main question I look at is, is it actually doing what we want? Uh, these machine learning models look like some really complicated structure where each edge here is some floating point number. Uh, how do you know what it's doing? That one was actually a very smaller one from maybe 15 years ago. This is what they have started looking like. This is also probably pretty old, about two or three years ago, where each of these has like thousands of floating point numbers, and you have this huge structure. Uh, and generally, people have started working on neural networks that are thousand layers, so there's absolutely no way you can just look at the structure and figure out what's happening. Um, and so the problem here is that when we do machine learning, there are a lot of people who actually interact with the system. Obviously, you think that a machine learning expert is the one who's doing all this, and he or she knows exactly what's going on. Uh, but actually, the input is not just the data. The input can be the algorithm. 
It can be the features, it can be the hyperparameters of the system, it can be output of other systems, and all of these choices influence how good your machine learning model is going to be. And so there's no way that a machine learning expert can sort of control for all of these. But he's not, he or she is not the only person who is part of the system. Usually it's part of some crazy software pipeline <coughs> that looks like that. Uh, sometimes the customers are the ones who are using the machine learning system or it's some software engineer and none of, none of these people can control for all of these things. And so in order to figure out what machine learning models are doing, people kind of use interpretable models and they tend to look you know, you hope they look something like this, where you can sort of think of it as a flowchart and you can understand what's going on. But usually, they end up looking a lot like that. So even if it's a flowchart, it's not a flowchart you can actually understand. Um, a lot of people look accuracy as, as the metric, and that it sort of goes a long way, but it's kind of unreliable. And, and we'll see some example of that later. Um, you can do all kinds of A-B testing where you split your population into two, but that's really expensive to do. Um, but most likely what people do is just some black magic, right? Like, oh, I trust this thing, or I think it's doing the right thing, or and, and so on. And that's not how you should be doing these things. Right? So just to show you how important this is, we can go back to this example, and I showed you that it was just making one mistake, and hopefully you were all very impressed. But actually what was going on here is that we had built a snow detector. And every time there was snow in the image, we would just predict wolf. And you can see why it would get this wrong, because there's snow here, it happens to be a dog. Um, and if you use something like this, this is what happens. Uh, this is a real news article where somebody uh, adopted a wolf as a dog because the machine, well, not the machine learning, but the human made mistake here. Right? <laughs> but that was some example of what I trained. Uh, what we also can do is look at something like this, which was the state of the art advanced machine learning algorithm that people are using, um, and say, okay, well, this is impressive. What if it, I, I ask it a different question? What are the eyes made of? Turns out it still says bananas, right? And that was a little strange. You can ask it what? It still says banana. Uh, you say what is, it says banana. Okay. And so the point here is that even though it looks good and humans sort of tend to get impressed easily, it is not doing what we want it to do. And so we should not, we should be careful about deploying it in the wild and putting it in the cars and phones and so on. And so my research has been looking at how we can sort of address this thing. Uh, and the ma main reason I'm doing this research is to sort of avoid this kind of a situation where in future we might have doctors and these key figures being played by machine learning. Um, and you know, you might go to a doctor who's a machine learning algorithm and say, hey, I have a headache, what might be happening? And the algorithm might say, actually, you only have six more months to live. And the problem is not that this is the case. The problem is if you say, why? do you think this is going to happen? The best the machine learning systems can do right now is spit out a bunch of numbers and say, hey, um, that's why. And there's no way you can understand it, right? Um, so in terms of machine learning, we are only looking at accuracy as a research sort of community. And what I'm saying is we should be looking at interpretability as well. So you, know, you can take simple interpretable models that are n not accurate and you can try to make them accurate, but they become uh, less interpretable. There has been research on building interpretable models, but they're actually you know, not really that accurate. In fact, they're much lower than the real world accuracy that you would want. And that's why a lot of deep learning stuff has come up, which say, okay, let's not care about interpretability, let's care only about accuracy, and many of them are actually above human level as well. Uh, what my research is, is to not do these kind of things, but instead take any algorithm and sort of push it to become more interpretable, right? So I'm not gonna change any of these, I'm gonna just push it towards that side. And the way we do it is, you know, like when we have some data and some machine learning algorithm, instead of knowing exactly what it is doing, we just kind of 
treat it as a black box and then do the explanations. Um, so in the interest of time, I'm not going to go into detail of um, how we do it. I'll just show you some examples of what these explanations look like. Uh, so for example, if you have an email like this, and you have an email classifier that tells you whether it's about atheism or Christianity. Um, so for example, the machine learning classifier says that this is an email about atheism. You'll know that this is probably the wrong prediction. Um, it's pretty easy to ask the question, why did this happen? And actually get some intuition for it. So what the explanation looks like is looking at words that the machine learning classifier thought belong to Christianity. And you'll see that this is the case here. It is about Christianity. Uh, but you can look at other words that it thinks is about atheism. So posting seems to be the one. Host seems to be the one. Keith seems to be the one. These are not words you would otherwise associate with atheism. So clearly, it's doing something wrong. But not only that, we know what it is doing that's wrong. Uh, so let me just go through this. We can also do this with neural networks and sort of crazier things. So we can look at something like this, which is a dog playing a guitar. And we can ask it, why did you predict this to be an electric guitar? And the explanation ends up looking like this. So it's basically saying that, according to the neural network, this part of the guitar looks like an electric guitar. Uh, similarly, this part of the image looks like an acoustic guitar. And then you can also ask it, why do you think it's a Labrador? And then it picks up on the fact that this part of the image looks like a Labrador. Right? So you can argue that, hey, this is not super clean. You know, this, this is not like a Labrador. But this is just what the neural network is doing. And you can decide whether it's doing a reasonable thing or not. And so going back to our example where we had built this node detector, basically. Um, we can actually now look at the explanations to see whether that's what's happening or not. And you can see every time we predict wolf, the explanation just focuses on the snow. Right? So here, snow and snow. It, it's, it's ignoring the actual animal. It's just saying, I'm going to look at the ground. If it's white, um, it's, it's wolf. Right? Um, and so now we can sort of deduce that we have built a snow detector. I ran some experiments with that. Um, we can also do it for question answering. So the question here was, what is the moustache made of? And we asked uh, our explanation system to figure out why is it predicting banana. And it said, oh, it's only focusing on the word what. It doesn't matter what use, what the rest of the question is. As long as the word what appears at the beginning, it always says banana. And so you can come up with all kinds of random questions, and the answer is always banana. <coughs> Even like, what is this? The picture of it says banana. Um, similarly, you can do it for other questions. There's one which says, how many bananas are in the picture? It says two. It turns out it's only focusing on the word many. As long as the question has many in it, it says two all the time. So again, you can have uh, questions that are we generate as part of our algorithm, and the answer is always two. Right? And so though, I hope what you guys are getting out of this is not that machine learning is sucks or anything like that. Uh, but the fact that we have to be careful when we are dealing with these really complicated algorithms, we have to know exactly what they're doing um, before we deploy them in, in the wild. Um, so hopefully you guys are convinced that if you want to trust these systems, if you want to be able to predict what they're going to do, and if you want to improve them, uh, you need these kind of explanations. Uh, so yeah. that's all I have. Uh, please email me if you have uh, any questions about anything, and I'll be around, so I'll be seeing you a lot. Thanks.